In an impassioned and articulate address, J.D. Vance presented a robust defense of free speech and the First Amendment, capturing a growing sentiment among certain political factions in the United States. He spoke to a deeply ingrained frustration felt by many citizens who perceive that their ability to express dissenting views is increasingly jeopardized in today's political climate. Vance's remarks were underscored by a conviction that the fundamental principles of free expression are vital to the very fabric of American democracy, framing his arguments within the broader context of what it means to live in a free society. Vance began his address by acknowledging a significant sentiment among a large segment of the American population, the belief that individuals ought to have the unimpeded ability to express their thoughts and opinions. He articulated this perspective with clarity, noting that there is a prevailing sense of exhaustion and irritation among many who feel they are being dictated to regarding what they should think or say. This pervasive feeling of disenfranchisement resonates strongly within certain groups in the electorate who perceive themselves as marginalized in conversations that significantly influence public policy and societal discourse. The implication behind Vance's words is stark. Countless Americans feel constrained and controlled, as if they are being directed by unseen forces that dictate acceptable narratives and viewpoints. At the heart of Vance's argument is the assertion that the Republican Party, particularly under the leadership of Donald Trump, represents the embodiment of free speech and the foundational rights articulated in the First Amendment. He expressed a profound sense of pride in this alignment, suggesting that it may be one of the most significant and defining characteristics of the party's identity in contemporary America. This assertion carries considerable weight, as it positions the party as a champion of free expression, which Vance argues is essential to preserving the core values that underpin American society. He passionately contended that if citizens are unable to engage in open debates or voice their disagreements with prevailing narratives, the very essence of American democracy begins to deteriorate, leading to a society where only a singular perspective can be tolerated. In a strategic and welcoming tone, Vance extended an olive branch to those who may not typically identify with the Republican Party, including Democrats and Independents. He suggested that the ethos of free speech transcends partisan lines, inviting a more inclusive dialogue that embraces a diverse array of perspectives. Vance's invitation underscores a desire for a political environment characterized by comprehensive and multifaceted discourse, where differing viewpoints can be discussed openly and respectfully rather than being marginalized or silenced. This call for inclusivity suggests that Vance envisions a political landscape where robust debate is not only encouraged but celebrated as an integral aspect of democratic engagement. As he continued his address, Vance deftly shifted his focus toward a critique of Vice President Kamala Harris, specifically targeting her responses to criticism regarding her policies and actions. He articulated a strong belief that her approach, labeling dissenters as racist, represents a particularly insidious form of censorship that fundamentally undermines the principles of democratic discourse. Vance characterized this tactic as especially egregious, arguing that it constitutes a blatant violation of the rights of citizens to express their opinions regarding the actions of government officials and the policies they implement. His remarks reflect a broader concern about the evolution of political discourse in the United States, suggesting that such labeling serves to stifle constructive debate and reinforce societal divisions rather than fostering an environment conducive to understanding and dialogue. Throughout his discourse, Vance highlighted specific policy failures he attributes to Harris, particularly in relation to issues surrounding immigration and public safety that he connects to the ongoing opioid crisis. He underscored his belief that citizens should possess the right to voice their concerns about these matters without the fear of reprisal or condemnation. The mention of alarming statistics, such as the troubling number of children reported missing in connection to policies he associates with their leadership, served to bolster his argument and underscore the real-world implications of these political decisions. Vance's rhetoric in this regard points to a widespread frustration with what he perceives as a lack of accountability among political leaders, particularly when their policies result in tangible negative impacts on communities across the nation. In a compelling conclusion to his arguments, Vance issued a direct challenge to Harris, suggesting that rather than attempting to silence criticism from citizens, she should focus on effectively engaging with the public and addressing their legitimate concerns. This call to action reflects a deeply held belief that political leaders have a responsibility to communicate transparently and responsibly with the electorate, thereby restoring trust and confidence in governmental institutions. By advocating for persuasion over censorship, Vance aligns himself with a vision of governance that prioritizes responsiveness to the voices of the people rather than dismissing or invalidating their experiences and opinions. In essence, Vance's remarks encapsulate a fervent defense of free speech, a pointed critique of contemporary political practices, and a call for a more inclusive and constructive dialogue among citizens. He positions the Republican Party as a stalwart defender of First Amendment rights, while simultaneously challenging political figures who may employ tactics that he perceives as undermining the democratic principles that should govern discourse in a free society. The intensity of his address reflects a significant and palpable sentiment among segments of the American populace that value open discourse and robust debate as essential components of the nation's democratic framework. Through his passionate articulation of these themes, Vance not only underscores the importance of free speech, but also highlights the critical need for a political culture that embraces diversity of thought and fosters an environment where all voices can be heard and respected. 
J.D. Vance's remarks on free speech and the First Amendment resonate with a significant and growing discontent within certain segments of the American populace. His defense of free speech, particularly in the context of perceived censorship by political leaders like Vice President Kamala Harris, underscores a broader sentiment that many individuals feel increasingly marginalized in contemporary political discourse. This sense of disenfranchisement is fueled by a belief that dissenting voices are being silenced or labeled in a manner that delegitimize their concerns, particularly when those concerns address critical issues like immigration, public safety, and community well-being. One of the key takeaways from Vance's address is the assertion that the ability to express dissenting opinions is essential for a functioning democracy. He effectively argues that without the freedom to voice concerns and engage in open debate, the fundamental principles of the nation are compromised. This viewpoint is particularly poignant in today's climate, where political polarization often results in a lack of constructive dialogue. Vance's call for inclusivity in political discourse, inviting Democrats and independents to join in the defense of free speech, highlights a strategic effort to broaden the Republican Party's appeal. By positioning the party as a champion of free expression, Vance seeks to align it with a fundamental democratic value that resonates with many voters who may feel alienated by the current political landscape. The implications of Vance's rhetoric extend beyond party lines, suggesting a potential shift in how political discussions are framed. His emphasis on free speech as a unifying principle could lead to an environment where political leaders are more accountable to their constituents. When citizens feel empowered to express their opinions without fear of retribution, it fosters a more engaged electorate. This engagement can result in increased civic participation, as individuals may be more likely to vote, campaign, or advocate for policies that reflect their beliefs and values. However, the consequences of this discourse are complex and multifaceted. While advocating for free speech can lead to a more vibrant democratic process, it can also exacerbate existing divisions. Vance's focus on labeling dissent as racist, particularly in the context of Harris's response to criticism, could perpetuate an us-versus-them mentality. This framing risks deepening the chasm between political factions, as individuals may become more entrenched in their beliefs and less open to dialogue with those who hold differing views. The potential for polarization increases when political discourse shifts toward personal attacks and inflammatory rhetoric rather than constructive criticism and mutual understanding. Sentiment analysis of Vance's speech reveals a potent mixture of frustration, indignation, and a rallying cry for change. His passionate delivery reflects a deep-seated belief that the current political climate stifles genuine discourse and that individuals must reclaim their rights to express dissent. This emotional appeal resonates with many who feel that their voices have been marginalized, contributing to a sense of urgency and the need for action. The underlying sentiment is one of empowerment, urging citizens to assert their rights and challenge those in power when they perceive failures in leadership or policy. Moreover, Vance's critique of Harris highlights broader societal issues related to governance, accountability, and public trust. When citizens witness political leaders dismissing legitimate concerns as mere racism or bigotry, it erodes confidence in governmental institutions and leaders. This erosion of trust can have long-lasting effects on civic engagement, as disillusioned voters may withdraw from the political process altogether. Conversely, if political leaders adopt a more inclusive and responsive approach to criticism, it could help bridge gaps and restore faith in democratic institutions. The strategic implications of Vance's statements cannot be understated. By framing the Republican Party as a defender of free speech, he seeks to reposition the party within a narrative that appeals to a broader audience, potentially attracting individuals who feel alienated by the prevailing political discourse. This strategy could be particularly effective in engaging younger voters and moderates who prioritize open dialogue and free expression. As these demographics become increasingly important in elections, the ability to connect on issues of free speech may enhance the party's electoral prospects. In conclusion, J.D. Vance's remarks serve as a clarion call for the defense of free speech and a critique of the current political climate. His emphasis on the importance of dissenting voices and open dialogue resonates with many Americans who feel their opinions are increasingly marginalized. The impacts of this discourse are significant, as they have the potential to reshape political engagement, promote inclusivity, and challenge the status quo. However, the consequences of this rhetoric must also be carefully considered, as the risks of increased polarization and divisiveness remain ever-present. Ultimately, Vance's call for empowerment through free speech highlights the critical need for a political culture that embraces diverse perspectives and fosters an environment where all citizens can engage meaningfully in the democratic process.